Uh, I'd like to turn first to Galatians 5, verses 19 through 23. And it says there, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Uh, I like to, as you can see by the slide, I like to focus today on the, the attribute of peace. We have nine here. I like to focus on peace. I think everyone in their own way is seeking peace. Um, and I read through the works of the flesh first because it gives us an idea of how people seek peace. A lot of times people will seek this inner relief uh, through these sinful actions, um, and they look for it in the wrong places. For exa example, um, drunkenness. A drunkard will typically try to find relief from his or her problems through alcohol. The problem is that it just creates more and more problems and doesn't solve it, um, and actually creates problems for themselves and also problems for their loved ones. Sin can never give rest. It, you th Satan gives you this idea that doing sinful action will bring relief, but it just brings more problems. So today I'd like to discuss true ways to find peace in your life. First way is peace through work or effort. And this kind of segues into what um, Javon was talking about. Peace really isn't some sort of euphoric feeling that you get just by itself. It does, it's not produced on its own. It takes something to achieve it. You know, um, for the week, Yahweh created seven days for the whole week, but he gave us six days, and then today is the Sabbath day. Well, to get to this day of rest, the Sabbath, we have to go through those six days of work. Work comes first, and then comes rest. And there's a lot of work. Six days, if you look at the ratio, six to, to one, um, it's a lot more work in comparison to the rest time. Work must come first. It's, for example, this, with this sermon, it took a, a bit of work to get this completed. However, every time whenever I'm done, I, I always feel very relieved because I, I finished it. And I'm sure the same thing with you as well. Whenever you accomplish something, you get this sense of relief that whenever you're done, you can't pursue happiness by itself. It's merely a, bro a byproduct of doing good or doing meaningful work. And if your work isn't meaningful, for instance, I'm sure all of us have work or jobs that we don't enjoy all as much. I, I'm, I include myself. Hopefully my boss isn't watching this. But in every, I, I don't care what job you have, there's always points where you just don't like it that much. Um, just reframe it. You know, for instance, for myself, I want to provide for my family. So it sure beats living on the street and, uh, you know, eating stale bread. So <laughs> I go to my job. You know, re reframe the work that you do to make it meaningful for yourself. If the focus is on fun first rather than work, you'll never find happiness. You'll never find that sense of satisfaction that you want to get. You know, there's a lot of people, they focus on the fun aspect and the enjoyment of life without realizing that you need to have effort first. Um, but also don't forget to rest too. You know, there are some people that are workaholics that forget to take that rest and usually it causes burnout. And the reason is because they're never really satisfied with their work. They never really take that moment to just, you know, think. You know, when, in, when Yahweh created the earth, he said, it is good. He looked at it and was like, I did a good job. And, you know, none of us can ever really say that fully because our work is only just good enough. But that's what Yahweh wants from us, to feel that sense of satisfaction. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 13 through 3, verse 13, and says, And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of Elohim. The next two ways of dealing with or having peace in your life um, is actually dealing with problems. The first one is peace through justice. You can't have peace without some justice. Um, there are always going to be wrongs in this world. And 
Um, if you see a wrong and you know it's wrong and you do nothing about it, it will eat away at you. You'll, you'll realize that you should have done something. And you'll kick yourself, realizing that if you would have stepped in and done something, you could have made a difference. Doing nothing leads to more wrong. If you see a wrong and you do nothing, it will lead only to more problems. Edmund Burke said this, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. When bad behavior is rewarded, it drives out good behavior. Anytime you have a group of people who are doing bad and that is rewarded, the people that are there that are good will leave. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You know, there's always going to be wrongs on a daily basis. That's just the world we live in. It's just sinful, and there's always going to be problems. And it may seem insurmountable. You watch the news, and it just seems like there's this problem after problem. And what, what can I do to help? But ignoring the problem isn't going to help either. You're, just, you're still going to feel bad about it. You should always try to do something, even if it's little. Uh, Sidney Smith, uh, he actually fought a few battles against Napoleon Bonaparte and won. He said, it is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do a little. Do what you can. What you can do for yourself, don't be unjust yourself. Be the example. If, if you see a wrong in the world, don't perpetuate it. Don't, don't be that person that you want to work against. Do what is right first. And then you can influence others to do right as well. And even if you only you do a little bit of good in your own little sphere of the world, at least you did something. At least you stepped up and were in the fight against the sin that's in the world and having your light shine regardless of the problems. The next um, way to find peace in dealing with problems is peace through dealing with, with problems and also having conflict resolution. This is sort of like justice, but more on a personal level. Conflict is very uncomfortable. I, I personally, my personality type, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of confrontation. But not dealing with a problem is also very uncomfortable. So you have to choose for the one. You either can be uncomfortable dealing with the problem or you can be uncomfortable having it fester inside of you and realizing that nothing is being done about it. The problem is if you don't deal with the problem, here's what's gonna happen. The issue is gonna fester inside of you. It's gonna grow. And you might become resentful of the other person. And the other person, not realizing with this no communication going on, might not realize why you're just so cold and distant. And they might ignore the problem too, not dealing with the same problem. And it might, they might think all these false situations in their head, create all these, uh, these uh, scenarios. And then they'll gain the same sense of resentment as well. And if neither party addresses the issue, even though it's uncomfortable, it could ruin or damage the relationship. So you have to ask yourself, is that relationship important enough to address it? It's not easy to do. We're gonna have a sense of, of fear within us. We're gonna fear what the other person's gonna say. You can't control what they're gonna say. You don't know what they're gonna say. You might hurt their feelings or hurt the relationship by saying what you're gonna say. And you may have a fear that by saying this and bringing it up, it may uh, the relationship may wane. But if you do nothing about it, it will wane anyways, and it will um, diminish. Matthew 18, verse 15 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If you have a dispute, you should always go to the other person first. Our goal is to resolve the issue and to retain the relationship. Um, I, got, I got some really good ideas from this one book I read. I uh, learned a lot from this book. And one of the chapters was on conflict resolution. It's a book called uh, Resolved, 13 Resolutions for Life by Orrin Woodward. Uh, here's what I learned. And this, this isn't like a step-by-step. -step, you shouldn't think of this as a step-by-step -step process. You should think of this as just steps and ways to retain the relationship. Step one is to affirm the relationship. You wanna tell the other person that you value this relationship, that this is why you're bringing this up. You're not bringing this up because you wanna accuse them or you wanna be hurtful of them or you wanna destroy them. You're doing this because 
Do you value this, this relationship? The second point is to seek to understand. You know, a lot of times our first, initiative, or our first inclination is to tell the other person how we're feeling instead of seeing what their viewpoint is. Because a lot of times in an argument, you don't really understand the whole picture. Seeing what the other person's side of the story is, is critical. It takes humility. But unless you know their point of view, you're not going to really understand the whole picture. Next is to seek to be understood. This is where you provide your viewpoint. Obviously, you have some, some problems with this. And you should, should view them. Then own your responsibility by apologizing. You want to take ownership of, of where you went wrong. Um, you know, it takes two to tango in any kind of relationship or any kind of problem. And, you know, if there is a problem, usually both sides have some wrong in it. Um, just by saying I'm sorry sometimes gets rid of all these problems that we have. Then realizing that, you know, you're sorry for the part that you played in this and apologizing for it. And then... If both sides agree, you want to seek agreement in roles and responsibility. So this is where both sides have agreed that they've had some wrong, and they want to move forward in this. Um, you want to deal with the issues when they're small. For instance, which is easier? Pulling out this little twig from the ground or pulling out that oak tree? You want to deal with the issues when they're small before they grow into something bigger and is blown out of proportion. Doing so, do it, not doing so, not dealing with these problems is prideful because we're thinking more of ourselves than the relationship that we have. In Proverbs 13, verse 10, it says, only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. And that's why it's important to apologize, even if Maybe you aren't as much in the wrong. It's always good to apologize because unless you come at the situation in, in humility, it's going to create pride within your heart. The next way to find peace is through thankfulness. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of Yahweh and Messiah Yahshua concerning you. You know, some try to find peace by always seeking. Javonna talked about that, of always trying to find something. They always feel like there's something missing in their lives, and they just fill it up with things, with objects, you know, maybe it's um, possessions, or maybe it's just doing a lot of things. They're just always trying to find stuff. They feel like whatever they have or whatever they do just isn't good enough. Now, I'm not talking to those that maybe are in a bad financial situation. I fully believe that if you're in a bad financial situation to work yourself out of it. But... For some, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. You're not going to be thankful for it. Um, it will never be enough. In Psalms 37, verses 3 through 4, it says, Delight thyself also in Yahweh, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto Yahweh. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And this also correlates with another peace that comes through thankfulness, and that's peace through trust. You know, if we're never really satisfied with what we have, then I don't think we really trust Yahweh because we don't, we don't believe that he is there providing for us, that he has given us the job, and he, if we lose that job, he'll provide another one, or that he's actually there for us. We have to go out and we got to achieve it for ourselves because this is it. This is us. But it's not just us. We're not on our own. Yahweh, we have to trust in Yahweh and trust that he will provide for us, trust in his provision. Next one is peace through giving. Of course, I talked about this a little bit on the high day, um, the importance of giving um, and making it a habit um, within us all, instilling that habit. Um, and this correlates with this, need, this uh, peace through thankfulness. You know, how do you feel whenever you give something away? You know, whenever we, we just had the feast and we gave um, an offering away, how did that, that feel for you? You know, for myself, it was, it, it was good. It was, it was nice to be able to contribute. You know, I'm following a command from Yahweh. Giving not only helps the person that you're giving, but it also helps yourself too. Giving something away. It's not selfish, but it's a selfless act. It's the product 
the product of giving is peace that we get. It's something that we get in return. And the last one I'd like to talk about is peace through Yahshua. I like to read two passages. First one is in I lost my spot. Matthew eleven. Matthew eleven, verse twenty eight through thirty. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. i also like to read Psalms 23. Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. This is peace through Yahshua. Now, I want to read through these passages again. Um, whenever I read through them again, I want you to, there, there are a lot of really great images that are, that are being shown here, shepherd and stuff and, and yokes and loads. I want you to see what images come to your mind and how you feel whenever these passages are read. Again, in Matthew 12, I'm sorry, Matthew 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. We are all broken. Every person here is broken. Everyone listening online is a broken person. As much as we may hide it or try to ignore it or maybe just don't even realize, every one of us is broken in some way, whether it's from our childhood or whether it's the day-to-day. -day. We all need someone to heal us and to help us. When I read these passages, I feel like I could be mended, like I can feel healing and I could be restored. I feel this sense of calm and the sense of peace when reading these passages. So I want to ask you, are you heavy laden? Do you feel like life has been rough? And do you feel like life has been taking a bit more than it has been giving? There is a lot of pain and there's a lot of worry in this world. But taking Yahshua's yoke upon you, he will give you rest as, his, as your shepherd and will restore your soul. Because Yahshua does care. And he takes, when you give Yahshua those cares, he gives them to Yahweh. And they want to help you. Yahshua wants to help you. Realize you're not alone in this walk. You have a wonderful shepherd watching over you. And he gave his life. We just we talked about that in the Passover. He gave his life so that we can have a chance for salvation. You know, he gave us these commands not for suffering and not so it's terrible upon us, but for our peace. We need a savior. We need Yahshua. And we'll never, ever have true peace without him. Galatians 5, verse 19 through 21. I'd like to read that again as I close. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, 
drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Satan is going to try to lure us in some way. He's either going to have us indulge in these sins or variations of these sins. He is going to try to offer us peace, but it's going to be a false peace. He's going to show you the, 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 um, the fruit on the tree and say, this, this is, leads to eternal life. This leads to happiness and peace. But it's not. It's false. It's not right. It'll only lead you to harm and also destroy your loved ones as well. Don't give in. Seek true peace. Seek true peace through Yahshua and the other things I described here and discussed. And you will find rest. And Yahweh bless. 